When he came to look at that old, gnarled, bent apple tree that was rooted into the ground there in the middle of the great orchard, which he looked after, and his father before him had looked after, and his father's father before had looked after, because that orchard had been passed down through the generations. But that old apple tree, the one that had been planted by his grandfather so many years before, was no longer bearing apples oh. and I know oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, the apple tree oh. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> and in those times, everything had to have a use. Because yes, it it, as you know, as we all know, everything had to be useful. If a tree was no longer bearing fruit, or an animal was old, like a cow, that would be the end. That would be the end, exactly. <laughs> da -da, the end. And as he looked at that old apple tree that was rooted into the ground, that had been there for so many years, but no longer bore the apples, he thought, hmm, that would make me a mighty fine tree, a chair, if I chop it down. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> that will put some wood into the hearth, because in these days, like this morning, wasn't it cold? It was cold. <laughs> And no central heating. <laughs> Everything, everyone lived around the great fireplace in the kitchen or the parlor. And that, and they would all huddle together. And that was also a time when they would tell stories. But on this occasion, they were not going to tell stories. For what the poor farmer had forgotten was that that old, bent, twisted apple tree was the home to the apple tree man who had looked after his family who had looked after the orchard for all those years it was also the home to the birds that sing in the branches and make the nests in their homes in the branches above it was also the home to the insects that would come gather up the pollen to take to eat every apple blossom so that apples would grow that's what he forgot so he decided that the very next morning he would go down and he would chop that apple tree down. Nasty poor farmer, poor apple tree. <laughs> but you know what fur you know what happens when there's a little whisper in the air? That little flutter of a voice? That little tickle in the ear? <laughs> I don't even have to tell you that it's excellent. <laughs> the birds and the insects all curled up into the ear of the old apple tree man and said, Oh, apple tree man, the poor farmer is going to chop, you down, chop your home down. And it is our home too. <laughs> Do you think he was a happy guy? No. No, oh, he wasn't. And he decided that he would pay that poor farmer a visit that very night. <laughs> so, there, as the farmer was lying peacefully asleep <laughs> in his bed. Oh, you could actually do snoring, couldn't you? <laughs> the apple tree man, well, he had that way about him because he was magical. He was a spirit. He entered into the old, poor farmer's dreams. And there he came to rest. And the poor farmer, well, suddenly he found himself wide awake, outside, in the orchard, at night. Oh, oh, oh it was only cold, wasn't it? And there, he was right opposite the apple tree. The old, twisted apple tree that was the home to the apple tree man. And there, he heard that muttering that whisper through the branches and he thought he wanted to go home and get back into a snuggly bed but then he heard a voice and he saw a face through the branches but it wasn't a scary face i hope mine's not scary <laughs> it wasn't a scary face it was a face of an old 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 man whose skin was the bark of the tree whose eyes were the bright apple pips that you find in the apple and he has old old face and he had a crown of apple blossoms on his head and he said to the old farmer this is my home this tree and you are going to chop it down this is, I know, no, mm, 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 mm. it ain't gonna happen, I'll tell you that now, it ain't gonna happen. Because this is also the home to the birds that make their nest high up in the branch of the tree. By the twitter and twitter and whistle in the branches. Insects, 
through the fold. <laughs> they're home through the fold in the bar. But he said, calm down. Tomorrow morning there will be a surprise. Dun, dun, dun. Surprise in the tree. And before you know it, boom! The old farmer was back in his bed. And there, it was early morning, and he could see the light was coming through the windows. And he thought, what on earth happened last night? And then he remembered the words of the old apple tree man. And with that, he jumped out of bed, he got washed and dressed, ran down the stairs, didn't even have a bite of breakfast, picked up his axe from the front <gasps> door. Oh, we still think it's going to be a bad ending for the apple, apple tree, don't we? <laughs> and he shot out through the door, across the yard, into the orchard, where he made his way over to where the old apple tree was, right in the middle of the orchard. As he went, came closer because he heard a humming in the air. Then he'd get louder and louder and louder. And he could see something glinting, gold and yellow in the early morning light. And when he got there, he saw that a branch had fallen off the tree and there was a hole in the side of it. And he could see as he looked inside that there was a beehive. And there were all these bees. And there was honeycomb. And it was all dripping with honey. And he managed to put his finger through the hole. Scoop up some honey. And when he tasted it, ooh, did it taste sweet? Is that honey sweet? Ooh, is that honey sweet? Ooh, no. Is that honey sweet? Yeah. Is that and he looked at that old apple tree and he thought, you know, that old apple tree has a use after all. Hey! 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 I'm not going to chop you down. He said to the old apple tree man, I'm not going to chop your home down. You can stay. You win. Hey! Hey! that he could see the apple tree winking at him. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been a great audience. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. We're going to step slowly now down to the crossing, but we'll all wait at the crossing so we can all cross together. We'll hold the lights and just go over the block. Turn up Cecil Road. Yeah, we'll stop
music. Right, the second story I will be telling you also concerns the apple tree man, but it also concerns our riddle. Oh. Ooh. Now, you might guess, as I'm telling the story, what the riddle is all about, because it's a little red house with no windows, oh. no doors, Ooh. and a star that lights it up inside. For this concerns a little boy called Tommy. He always had a little boy called Tommy in a story. And he and his mom had moved from the city to the countryside to look after his grandma. Because this was during the time of COVID and during the time of the first lockdown. Oh, I'm so sorry to remind you. Boo! His, his, his. But his grandma was getting on in years. And there was nobody around to help her. And, oh, it breaks your heart. It really does. In a home. In a home. No, not in a home. Yes, but in a home. No. She had that thing that happens to us all that happens happening to me. As I am gradually aging, your joints become stiff. And when you've been lying in bed all night long, oh, to move your arm, to move your leg, to move your body, well, that is painful. And that does not put you in the best of tempers, I can tell you that now. Because when Tommy and his mother went to live with their grandma, and his mother would be helping her get out of bed, all Tommy could hear from that bedroom was, oh, my joints hurt, Sarah. That was the name of her, his mother. Oh, I haven't slept a wink all night last night. Oh, 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 oh. And when Tommy sometimes might be laughing, or might be running up and down the hallway, out from that bedroom door would come. Tommy, stop it! You are making noise! Oh, getting on my nerves! Because for Tommy, all his grandma was old and she was grumpy and she was bad tempered. And so he had nothing to do with her. Oh, I know. But you can imagine being out there in the countryside. Well, there's only so many times that you can ride your bike up and down the lane. There's only so many times when you can go playing football in the back garden by yourself. There's only so many times when you can just do FaceTime with your friends and do your school lessons. And needless to say, Tommy got really, really bored. So one day, he went up to the room where his mother was working because she was always busy working from home, taking care of the house, taking care of her mother, Tommy's grandmother. And Tommy banged on the door. And he said, as the door opened, Mom, I'm bored! <laughs> oh, and his mother said, Tommy, what? Try and do something. But he said, no, I'm bored. I don't want to live here anymore. Grandma is so old and she's always grumpy and she's always bad tempered. Can't we go back to the city? And his mother said, no, we can't. We have to stay here. We have to look after Grandma. But, she said, I have an idea. You like riddles, don't you? Ooh. Do you like riddles? Do you like riddles? Yes. I do. You do. Do you like riddles? Yeah. Do we all like riddles? Yeah! So, she said to Tommy, I have a riddle. I want you to bring back the answer to me. And the riddle is, what is a little red house? No windows, no doors, and has a star that lights it up inside. I think we might know the answer already. But, no, okay. Well, let's find out, shall we? Well, Tommy said, oh, wow, that's really great. Oh, I love riddles. But what is it? <laughs> what is it? Um, um, can you help me? And his mother said, no, I'm busy. As she opened up the laptop, I've got a meeting. But I tell you who can help you. Your grandma could help you. Oh. Was Tommy happy about that? No. No. Was he happy? No. Was he happy? I don't know. Can we touch more? I see. Yeah. Was he happy about that?
happy about his grandma? No, he wasn't happy about his grandma. Because to Tommy, she was always... Oh! oh. And she was always... Yeah. yeah, and she always had a bad... Tessa! Exactly. Smelly <laughs> breath. Smelly <laughs> breath. Oh dear, poor grandma. <laughs> anyway, he went down the stairs and he thought, oh, he knew she was in the living room with her knitting, sat next to the fire. So, he opened the door and there she was, quietly knitting. And when she looked up, she smiled at him. So she said, hello, Tommy, what can I do for you? And he went up to her and felt really, really brave. And he said, oh, Grandma, I have this riddle that, that Mom gave to me. And he told her, little red house, no doors, no windows, and a star that lights it up inside. He said, Grandma, what do you think that could be? Ooh. Well, Grandma, though she was wise and had lived on this earth for many, many years, she didn't know the answer. And she said, oh, Tommy, I don't know, but I tell you who could help you. Yeah. Who, he said. <laughs> who, exactly. Zero. Good mm -hmm. answer. Who? Yes. 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 So, as she said, the apple tree man lives in the old apple tree down at the end of the back garden. And my father was planted that, your great grandfather, when we first moved into the house. Whenever I had a problem, said your grandma, I would always go down, stand underneath the apple tree, and I'd say, Apple tree man, apple tree man, can you help me, please? Well, Tommy said, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll go down. So he ran out of the living room, ran out of the kitchen, out to the back door, down the back path, and there he came to the old apple tree, which like in the first story was twisted and bent, and it was actually been rooted into the ground for many, many years. And he stood underneath the branches, and he heard the birds twittering in the branches above, and he felt the sun on his face, and he said, oh, apple tree man, apple tree man, can you help me, please? And he could see that there were some red apples hanging from the branches above. And all of a sudden, the tree began to shimmer. The tree began to tremble. The tree began to shimmer. Yeah! That is what landed in his hand. The apple tree had given him an answer. So he was so excited, he ran back. But as he ran back, he began to think about little red house, no doors, no windows. It was an apple! What about that star inside, hey? He thought it's an apple. What about the star inside? So he went running into the living room where his grandma was waiting for him, and he said, Grandma, Grandma, it's an apple. The little red house with no doors, no windows. But what about the star inside? <laughs> she said, I tell you what, Tommy, let's go into the kitchen and we'll find out. Give me my walker. So he gave the walker and she pushed herself out of the armchair, grabbed hold of the walker, and slowly made her way into the kitchen. Where she sat down at the kitchen table. She put the walker at the side and she said to Tommy, go to the drawer, get the knife, and get the shopping board and bring it back to me, which he did. And when he gave it to her, she then got hold of the apple, like this. She got the knife, 
and she put it on the chopping board and she cut it down the center. And the apple split open. Woo! And inside was a star. A star that lights up the apple inside. And after that, Tommy and Grandma were the best of friends. And you can see a little bit of a star. It's not much of a star, but a star. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we're going to have a little bit more music from Rosie Voices. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.